Hey guys, in this video we are going to be looking at a number of updates from Adobe and also from UL Benchmarks. We're going to be looking at the Adobe Lightroom August update as well as Adobe's announcement that they're stopping support for older versions of Windows and Mac OS. And finally, we're looking at an announcement from UL Benchmarks about ray tracing. So we start off with the news of the update for Adobe Lightroom. There are a number of updates for different versions of Lightroom. For Lightroom Classic CC, there's a new import presets and profiles function, which will allow you to import a zip archive of presets and profiles. This will be done with the click of a button in Lightroom Classic CC and will allow you to install the presets and profiles in the right place. In Lightroom for Android, there is a new technology preview, Best Photos, which is going to allow you to use artificial intelligence, Adobe Sensei, to find what it calls a recommended selection of your photos within an album with the highest potential quickly and easily. Also within Lightroom for Android, there is an improvement to the optics section with the ability to reduce chromatic aberrations, as well as manually select from one of more than 1200 Adobe created lens profiles available within Lightroom CC. Support for file formats also improves with support for HEIC or HEIF. This is a popular new file format, which I think was originally created by Apple. In Lightroom for iOS, the filter menu has been updated, enabling you to filter your photos by media type, camera, location, keywords, and whether or not the photo has been edited. HDR and long exposure photos captured within the Lightroom camera are now going to be greatly reduced in size without any visual quality loss. They're going to be reduced up to two thirds in size and will take up less space and less time to upload. Finally, there's a new depth map support, which allows you to capture HEIC photos in Lightroom Mobile. And these will have depth maps. So you can now create selections based on the depth of field within the photograph. This is the kind of technology you find within Apple portrait mode. And in Lightroom CC for Windows and Mac, there is a new store album locally setting, which allows you to save original copies of that album's photos locally, and which should be helpful when you're traveling to areas in the wilderness with limited or low bandwidth internet connections. And there are quite a lot of other new features that are coming in to Lightroom CC. So you should be able to get that update uh, anytime from today onwards. And in other Adobe news, Adobe Media Encoder, After Effects, Audition, and Premiere Pro, as well as other software from Adobe, will only support Windows 10 in future. You won't be able to get the upcoming upgrade to these software packages unless you're running the latest versions of Windows 10 and Mac OS. Now, this announcement is a surprise, not a surprise, because Adobe have stopped supporting older OSs for some of their more recent software. So Adobe Dimension does not work except in Windows 10. And I think Lightroom CC needs Windows 10 as well. So this seems to be a growing trend within Adobe Creative Cloud. Finally, some news from UL Benchmark. They're saying that they're developing a completely new ray tracing benchmark. Now, there was previously some talk that UL Benchmark will create a ray tracing benchmark, but include that within another suite of benchmarks uh, called TimeSpy. Tech Power Up are now reporting that uh, UL has elected to develop a totally new benchmark built from the ground up to use Microsoft's DirectX ray tracing. This new benchmark will be added to the 3D Mark app as an update. The new test will produce its own benchmarking scores and will provide users with yet another ladder to climb on their way to the top of the benchmarking scene. Now this new benchmark, this new test will be available on or around the time of NVIDIA's 20 series launch. 
September the 20th. So this is something which makes a lot of sense because the new hardware from Nvidia, the RTX series, is so very different from the previous Pascal range. And I think it makes sense to have a completely new benchmark and hopefully this new benchmark will allow us to compare AMD's real-time ray tracing with Nvidia's real-time ray tracing. I think obviously Nvidia have something of an advantage but still AMD have been in the real-time ray tracing business for quite some time and it'll be interesting to see how they compare. So hopefully we'll be able to make a direct comparison like for like between these different company's products. That's going to be it for this one. I hope you liked some of that. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more videos. I will see you later. Take care. Bye.